Hello and welcome to episode 6 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this video we're going to be looking at how to create simple sprites in Mode 7. So as a quick recap, in the last video we were looking at the graphic control characters that can be used to generate various shapes using six source and we also learnt that the colour control characters in graphics mode are needed on any line in which you want to create some kind of graphic. So what is a sprite? Well, a sprite is really no different from any other graphic. The only difference being that a sprite is something which moves, or at least gives the impression of movement. Um, now you might want to use a sprite in a game like Cosmic Invaders if you want to provide some sort of life to the uh, enemies that you're trying to shoot down. Uh, you could have them as static uh, graphics moving across the screen from side to side, but giving them some level of animation just makes the game a little bit more interesting. So just to recap, something like our base, which we can see defined in line 380 here, this is not a sprite because if I want to print my um, my base, I can, I can repeat exactly what it says here. Um, I just need to invoke the relevant control character in mode seven. So I can do a print and then chr string. If we're gonna make the base red, use control character 145 and then use the um, description that we can see there for the variable and lo and behold, there is our base, which you'll remember from uh, screenshots of the game itself. So that's all well and good, but obviously the base is not a sprite, it's just a graphic and uh, obviously part of the code further down will enable us to move that graphic from left and right, but that's as far as it goes. So things are a little bit different when it comes to the space invaders themselves. Uh, now you can see that they've been defined in uh, the lines reading down from 230 all the way down to 310, but their variable definitions are a little bit different from the base. Whereas the base is a simple um, string variable essentially that just contains uh, these characters here. Uh, the space invaders are defined in dims, which you'll recall um, were defined further up at the top of the program up here and you can see Alien 0, Alien 1, Alien 2, and each one of these dims is actually comprised of two individual records, and they represent the two frames of the sprite. So these are very simple sprites. They just have uh, alternate, alternating images from one to the other and back again. So they're defined in a very similar way to the base, but we have two different definitions. We have a definition of them in one state and then a definition of them in the other. You'll also notice that the definition of these variables includes these down and back cursor control characters. So what that's actually doing is it's creating one line of uh, the alien made up of these characters here, then it's going down, back, 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 and then it's creating the next line, and then again down, back, 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 and the third line. So actually each alien uh, frame of the sprite is is three lines, if you like, of different characters, and it's the same for the other frame of the sprite, which is defined in the second record of the dim for the relevant space invader, or cosmic invader, I should say. Now, if we want to actually simulate that in our BBEM over here, uh, we're going to have to use a program, a uh, shorter program that I wrote earlier. So we'll just list that one out. In fact, that's a little bit difficult to read in mode seven, so I'm going to switch to mode three and list it out again because it just keeps things uh, a little bit more neat. Now you can see in this program all the stuff basically from lines 10 down to 160. This is just code that um, is replicated pretty much line for line from the Cosmic Invaders program itself. The only thing that I've had to write fresh, if you like, is lines 170 down to 230. Now the reason that I've had to do this is because what I'm trying to simulate is the sprites working in action. So I could just print an individual alien, um, but that doesn't actually give me the appearance of a sprite. So to create the appearance of a sprite, what you actually need to do is create a loop. And within that loop, you want to essentially have the first frame of the sprite being printed. And then after a suitable time period, you have the second frame being printed. And in this program, I've actually used all three of the aliens here. So you can see alien zero, alien one, and alien two with their zero um, images. And then after a pause of a thousand, uh, which is a, basically a thousand cycles uh, of the CPU in, in the beep, it then prints them again, and it overwrites them in the exact same position that they were in previously. But this time it uses the, uh, the frame one of the dim rather than the frame zero. Then it waits for a thousand cycles, 
and the ov overall thing will repeat again because we're obviously inside this repeat until false which is an infinite loop so unless i press the escape uh, button this is just going to go on forever so to see what that looks like i can just run the program and there we have it there are our aliens so as you can see that's really all that's happening is that the program is printing the first frame and then it's waiting a thousand which of course doesn't take very long at all in in uh, cpu terms and then it prints the second one and then it goes back to printing the first one again and that's essentially how you create a sprite or at least a very simple sprite in mode 7. so just take, taking a look at the program again just to clarify a few things um, you'll notice that before I'm actually able to do the loop down here from lines 180 to 230, first of all, I need to set up the graphic control character. So what's actually happening in line 170 is that I'm telling the program that for the first, um, essentially, 11 lines down from the third line on the screen, I want graphic control character for cyan. So I could change that. If I wanted the aliens to be in red, um, all, I can, all I can really do here is I can just pop up to this line um, and then copy across. Basically copy all the way up to this point. And then I could say red. Okay. And then we'll just copy the rest of the line. Run the program. And exactly the same thing happens, but this time they're in red. And the way that that's achieved is because basically from this line here all the way down to this line here although you can't see it there is the graphic control for red and it applies to everything on each of those lines and because it's been done uh, within a loop obviously we we're able to achieve that pretty quickly so this loop has just been essentially put onto a single line using the colon separator so these are technically three uh, three lines of code here but it's a simple for loop and it's basically just saying from line three to line 11 i want to have the graphic red character and again, if we wanted to change that, uh, we could we could simply repeat this again, go all the way across to here, and then change it to yellow, perhaps. Run the program, and we achieve a similar effect, but this time in yellow. And of course, you don't have to stop there. You could, if you if you wanted to, you could obviously change the color uh, part way down. So this one is doing the same color all the way along. Um, but if we wanted to, what we could say is if we copy copy this line here well, instead of saying 3 to 11 we'll say let's say 3 to uh, 7 and we'll say yellow and then next i and then what we'll do is we'll pop in a cheeky 175 and for this one we will say for i percentage equals 8 to 11 which is the remainder and then we can just copy the same again so we'll just copy this here and we'll put that into cyan and what you'll see hopefully if this has worked correctly of course is we shall run the program and there you go so what it's done is it's done basically the lines three four five six seven eight um and then obviously at this point it's switched to cyan so you can see that this is how the uh, change in colors of the cosmic invaders actually takes place within the game as they move down the screen the predefined color bars along the screen um, they move into different control characters and so they change color as as they move down so that's that's actually skipping ahead a little bit to what we'll see later in the program but hopefully you get the idea that that's essentially what these print tab loops are doing here they're defining the control characters for the entire line up front and therefore anything that we print within uh, those lines will take on um, the, uh, the the relevant control character this is even more clear if i was to just completely blank out lines 170 and 175 so now i don't have those print tabs at all if i now run the program you can see that we have this rather peculiar looking uh effect and actually you'll see that that looks a lot more like what you can see defined in the program and that's because we've stripped out the graphic control characters for those lines and so what you're seeing are the actual uh, letters and the occasional block there um, rather than the sixels that we, we would otherwise expect to see um, they kind of look like sprite skeletons which are <laughs> it's not quite the effect that we're going for obviously so that's effectively uh, all there is to say uh, on the uh, the creation of those sprites as i say we've skipped a little bit further ahead into the program we'll see a bit more of that later on um, where we where we actually set up the color scheme for the overall game and it doesn't just apply for for the aliens themselves but also applies to things like the shields at the bottom of the screen and also the color of our base as well 
but um, at this stage we've managed to work our way through all the way down to uh, line 380. The only thing I didn't really dwell on because there's not a lot to say on it are these lines here. These are really just being used as a way of easily blanking out space invaders. Sorry, I should say cosmic invaders, I know. Um, so what these variables are essentially used for is when you've shot one of the aliens and it's necessary to blank them out, obviously the way that you do that is you print a set of spaces to cover over the alien. And as you can see, it needs to present those across the alien itself, and therefore that's all three lines. So you've got spaces and then down back 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 more spaces down back 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 and again more spaces so that blank one would blank out the whole of the alien um, as defined in um, in the relevant frame there's an alternative one here as well which actually has one extra space on it um, again we'll see more uh, for the reasons for that later on in in the, in the series but essentially these variables are just here to achieve um, blanking out an alien where it's necessary to do so and we've also got something here as well, where if you want to basically blank out um, the side of a block of aliens, this is just a single space here. Again, we'll see the, the, the use for that later on. But really, lines 330 to 360 are just here for the purposes of blanking out either an entire alien or part of the alien, um, depending on what it is we're trying to achieve. So nothing, nothing more to say about them than that. So as I say, that takes us down to line 380. Um, lines 400 to 420, uh, since we're looking at these already, we can probably have a go at uh, trying to demonstrate those. So if I just use my program that I've already got defined here, in fact, I might, I might uh, reload it because um, I obviously removed those print tabs. So if I just reload that one again and list it, so we've got the print tabs back. Um, what we'll do here is we'll leave the print tabs in place. Uh, but then for line 180, uh, I can do, let's, let's use um, line 420 first of all, which is the, the mystery, which is the flying saucer that runs across the top of the screen. So if I do that one, um, let's say print tab 5,3, and we will have our mystery alien. Just need to put that in here. Uh, and then I'm going to need to just ditch uh, the remaining lines. So just quickly do that so that we don't cause any confusion there. Okay, there you go. So that's our mystery alien in Cyan. That's the flying saucer that flies across the screen. So it's not technically a sprite. It's just a, a static graphic like the base, which, which flies across um, the screen, a little bit um, obviously controlled by the program rather than by the, uh, by the player. Um, and then the other, uh, the other variable definition that we've got here, which is, oh, sorry, which is again not actually um, a sprite, of course, is this uh, shield, which is effectively just a set of blocks. Um, so we can see that these are the block characters. Now I do have a little bit of difficulty sometimes achieving uh, the uh, the uh, copy and paste. So I would ideally quite like to just do a print tab five comma three and then and then take this set of characters here. Uh, but that doesn't always work especially well. Yes, it tends to put them onto a separate line, which, yes, <laughs> is not quite what we're going for. So let's, let's try uh, print tab 5, comma 3, and then we'll just, we'll just use what we've, uh, what we've managed to paste in there. So if I just grab all of those uh, all the way to the end, there we go, and run the program. You can see that that's our shield base. Now it's in cyan at the moment. Uh, technically, if we wanted to uh, to show that as it would appear in the game, um, it'll actually appear on a green line. So what we can do is just temporarily change our line up here, change that to green. There we go. And run the program. And there you go, that's our green base, uh, or green shield, sorry, that protects the base. Uh, so that's that's essentially taken us all the way down to the bottom now of all of the variable declarations. So I know we've covered a little bit more than just sprites in this video, um, but hopefully it's recapped a little bit on some of the graphic controls that we were looking at in the previous episode as well. Um, and what that means is that in the, in the next video uh, in the series, we can actually start to take a look at some of these procedures, um, kicking off, of course, with the um, proc initialize, which is uh, which is where we uh, we kind of kick things off. Um, to get the program started. But in the meantime, I'm going to just quickly reload my original program again. And just so that, oops, <laughs> would help if I uh, used the right controls there. 
and we shall run that program and that'll see us out at the end of the video so there's our alien sprites again which was of course the main topic of the uh of the video anyway i hope you found that informative and that you've taught you a little bit more about sprites and how you can achieve some simple sprite effects using mode 7 graphics and until the next time when i hope you'll join me again goodbye